Hey there, welcome back. This is Professor Hank, and in this video, I am going to show you UML class diagrams. Okay, let's go ahead and begin. Now, what does UML stand for? Well, UML stands for the Unified Modeling Language. And the Unified Modeling Language is a language that is used to model, among other things, object-oriented systems. And the way it does this is by providing standard diagrams that allow us to graphically depict object-oriented systems. Now, the UML, very complex, very sophisticated. It's not a programming language. It is a, you can just think of it as a meta language for describing systems that you would implement using a programming language. Okay, so in this video, we're gonna have a very, very, very narrow focus. We're just gonna take a look at the basics of a UML class diagram. Right? It's not a comprehensive video. We're just getting you introduced uh, to this thing. Okay, so uh, the UML class diagram is a diagram that is drawn as a box and it's going to have three main sections. Okay, the top section is going to contain the name of the class exactly as it would appear when you write the class in, say, C or Python. Right? The next section is going to contain a list of all of the member variables for that class, right? So um, all of your private public variables, say, um, you know, like int x or double d, okay? And then in the third section, you list all of the member functions uh, that were going to belong to the class that you would be writing for the class. And that section is going to look kind of like a list of prototypes, but not exactly, okay? And so what the UML class diagram essentially provides you with is, hey, here's the name of the class, here's the variables that belong to this class, and here are the functions that are going to belong to this class. It doesn't necessarily uh, mention anything about implementation details, it's just a blueprint for you know what functions you're gonna have what variables you're going to have, not necessarily how those functions are going to be implemented. Anyway, so let's continue. Uh, the UML class diagram provides for uh, access specification, right? So if we want to denote the fact that a method is public or that a variable is private, well, if the attribute is going to be public, we're going to label that thing with a plus. Okay, and if it's private, we're going to label that thing with a minus. Okay, and I'll show you some examples here in a sec. Okay, now we can also specify what type of data the uh, variable is going to store. So with UML class diagrams, the data type comes after the variable name, right? This is kind of backwards from, um, you know, what you might be used to in C++, but... UML class diagrams, they're language agnostic. They don't care about the language that um, you're implementing your design in. They're just a notation, a way of graphically depicting what the class is going to contain. So uh, here is an example of two variables that are type double that are going to be private, right? So we can see that leading off the variable is its access specification and this variable is going to be private because there's a minus name of the variable is width and then we've got a colon separator here and then following that is the data type right so here i can see that i got two my class is going to have two variables they're both type double and they're both going to be private okay so what about parameters right for methods well, the type of the parameter is going to come after the parameter name, similar to the member variables that I just showed you. So as demonstrated here, we've got a method, right? And this would go in that bottom uh, portion of the UML class diagram, whereas the uh, variables go in the middle. So here we've got a method called set with, right? And it's going to be public because there's a plus here. And it has a single parameter named W and that parameter's data type is double. Okay, now what about its return type? Well, the return type is gonna follow this pattern, right? This it's gonna be consistent with what we've seen so far. The return type 
which you could say is the data type for the method, be one way of looking at it, it's gonna follow the method definition, right? So here's our return type for the set with method. So here we can see the complete description uh, in the UML class diagram for a method that's gonna to belong to the class. So we've got a method named set with, it's public, it returns nothing, and it accepts one argument, which is type double. Okay, now the return type for constructors and destructors is omitted, which makes sense because constructors and destructors don't return anything. So that's demonstrated with this example right here. Okay, so let me give you an example of how you write one of these class diagrams using a tool called UMLet, which is free and you can download at www.umlet.com. And once I've written up a simple class diagram, I'll go ahead and implement it using C++. Okay, so I'm gonna have a class which I'll call rectangle, okay? And so remember that UML class diagrams are gonna have three areas, right? And the top area is gonna be the name of the class, right? So this is gonna be class rectangle, okay? And the middle region of the box is going to contain um, your member variables, right? So I'm gonna have two variables for my class rectangle uh, one of those is going to be called length, which is private, and it's going to be type double, okay? And the other is going to be called width, and it's going to be type double, right? So we got a minus here that is um, denoting the fact it's a private variable, right? That's the access specifier um, type of the data that the variables can hold comes after the variable name. Uh, so double comes after length and similarly for with private and it's double. Okay. Now the bottom region is going to be where all my methods are denoted, right? The methods that are going to belong to this, this class. So I'll go ahead and have a constructor for this thing. Uh, it's going to be part of my public interface. So I got a plus there. And since it's a constructor, it's gonna have the same name as the class. And I'll make this constructor uh, parameter less. So no parameters for my constructor. And there's no return type. So I'm gonna omit a uh, data type for the return type. Okay. Now I'm gonna need a couple accessors and mutators. Um, one mutator will be, I'll call set length, which is going to accept a single argument. So it's gonna need a parameter which I'll call, uh, I'll call it underscore length. And that guy's data type is gonna be double, right? And my method is gonna return uh, nothing, okay? And I'm gonna need another mutator to set the width variable. And its parameter name is gonna be underscore width. And it's gonna need to be a double. And it's gonna return nothing as well. Okay, and then I'm gonna need a couple accessors to return length and width. So we'll call those uh, get length, which returns nothing, or excuse me, which accepts no arguments, and it's gonna return a double. And then we're gonna have uh, get width. Okay, and it accepts no arguments, and it's gonna return a double also. And then I'll also include in my class, um, get area. Okay. So here we go. Here is my UML class diagram for my rectangle class, right? So this is going to be a class that has two private variables, one named length and width as denoted by the minus and the names of the variables in that middle region. Uh, the types are double. Name of the class is rectangle, and this particular class is gonna have, what, six methods. A constructor named rectangle, uh, two mutators named set length and set width, res res 
uh, respectively. They're both going to accept a single double argument. So set length is going to have a primer named underscore length and set width is going to have a primer named underscore width. Neither of those methods are going to return anything. Get length and get width uh, are both going to return doubles and accept no arguments. Get area also going to return a uh, double and accept no arguments. Okay, so there is a UML class diagram. Okay, so let me go ahead and uh, write up the class for my rectangle and I'll put it in its own header file and we'll see that the code is going to mirror or is going to be an implementation of my design, right? So I designed my class using the UML class diagram and now I'm going to um, write the code for it. Now notice that the UML class diagram doesn't give you any implementation details. It doesn't tell you uh, what should be in the body of the methods. It's just saying, hey, here's the name of the class. Here are the variables. Uh, here are their data types. Here are their access specifications. Here's a list of the methods that you're going to need. The actual implementation details of the methods would be provided in additional documentation somewhere else, okay? All right, anyway, so uh, let's go ahead and write this class. It's gonna be class rectangle, right? And that's gonna match the name of the UML diagram. And then I'm gonna have my private stuff and I'm gonna have my public stuff. And my private stuff is gonna include two variables and their types are double. So double length and width. Okay, and then my public interface is going to have six public methods, a constructor, okay, and a couple of mutators called set length and set width, which are going to be void, right, and each one of them, oops, uh, set width, sorry, is going to accept a single double as an argument. And then I'm going to have a couple of accessors right, called get width and get length. And then I'm going to have another one final accessor called uh, get area. Okay, so as you can see, my class implementation reflects my UML diagram. Same name for the class, same name for the variables, same name for all of the methods, same type and number of parameters, same return types, right? So everything matches up here. Now let me finish off this class by implementing the methods. Right? So UML class diagram doesn't tell you anything about the, implement the implementation details of the methods just what the class needs to have. Okay, so um, for my constructor, I'm just gonna set length and width to zero. Okay, and then for set length and set width, well, they're gonna do what you think they're gonna do. Right, they're gonna set the length and they're gonna set the width. Now, what's the name of the parameter for my set length method? Well, it's underscore length, right? That's what I have in my UML class diagram. So that's what I'm gonna have here. Right, what's its data type? Double, because that's what's in the UML class diagram. Okay, so this is just gonna set the uh, length to the parameter. And then set width is gonna do pretty much the same thing. Right, so the name of that method is gonna match up my UML with my UML class diagram, its return type is gonna match up, and its perimeter type and name and number of parameters is gonna match up also. Okay. All right, and then finally I've got my accessors here. Get length which is simply going to return length and get width, which is simply going to return the 
width. And then finally, get area, which is simply going to return length times width. Okay, so there you go, right? So here's the specification part of the class and that's going to reflect the UML class diagram, right? Over here and um, the implementation details, well, I made those up, but the names of the parameters reflected the names on the UML class diagram. Um, so there you go. Okay, so that's gonna bring this video to a close. If you felt that the video was useful, please consider giving the video a thumbs up. And if you thought that the video sucked, well, then you've got that thumbs down button as an option as well. If you'd like to see more videos, if you're interested in more content from the channel, feel free to hit that subscribe button. And as usual, if you're a student of mine and you have further questions, feel free to drop me an email or to stop by my office hours. Okay, thanks for watching and we'll see you next time.